Okay, so let's just close this up and we'll reopen our diffuse map. And we'll just make the spec map out of this again. Okay, so let's fit that to the screen. And we'll use uh, a few of these layers. We're not going to need all of them again. Uh, the first thing we should do is just go down to the base layer here. And we're just going to change the color of the base layer. All right, let's actually, before we do it, let's actually desaturate these other layers here. So I'm going to go up to the rubber layer again, hit Control Shift U, and we'll also desatur desaturate the blue one here. Control Shift U. All right, so we have all the color out there, and now we'll go back onto the base layer, and we'll just uh, change the color of this to maybe a, a, around a yeah, dark gray. Uh, let's do maybe something like that, around 50 on the RGB. Okay, we'll just fill this layer. Okay, let's maybe... Uh, fit this to the actual size here and for the rubber layer let's go up to that one okay on the spec map here let's maybe keep this we have a, a little bit of white specs in here and we maybe want to keep those uh, for the spec map all right but let's maybe try to brighten it up a bit here let's do uh, brightness and contrast and we'll just adjust the settings here let's take the brightness up a bit We don't want to go too high. Let's maybe do like 50%. And for the contrast, let's take that up a bit as well. Uh, let's do about 50 on that as well. Okay, so 50 and 50 and okay. And let's just go up here for a sec. Uh, I'm just wondering if we should get rid of this uh, blue mask layer here. Okay, let's maybe turn that off and we'll just work on the gray mask again. Okay, and for this one, we're gonna to wanna to bring out uh, some of these scratches, but we're gonna want them to be more of a, a lighter shade, like a white color here, so we get some highlights off them. Uh, so let's maybe go into the color box here on the layer. And for this one, we'll just fill it maybe with a light shade here. Let's go up. Uh, let's maybe just try even straight white. Okay, so we'll make that white and we'll fill the layer with that color. Okay, that's gonna brighten it up a lot here. Okay, now we'll just maybe play with the mask settings a little bit here. So let's uh, click on the mask box. And let's maybe try brightness and contrast in this as well. Okay, so adjustments, brightness, contrast. And we'll just kind of tweak these settings a bit. Let's darken it up a little bit more. Okay, I just want to try to isolate some of the uh, scratches here. Okay, so we'll take that down a bit. Let's do maybe around negative 60 for now. And for the contrast, Let's maybe add some more. We'll just take that right up to actually to 100 here. So that's uh, a little bit more broken up, which is what we were looking for here. Okay. And let's maybe see if we can get a little more out of it. Let's go back and put another brightness and contrast on. And we'll just take the contrast up again. Okay, and you can see that intensified that quite a bit. Okay, so we'll just go with 100 on the contrast and we'll just leave the brightness at zero for now. Okay, and that looks pretty good for the metal. Uh, Let's leave it like that for now. Let's do something with this glass layer here. Okay, so let's go up to the glass layer. And for this one, let's maybe change the color a little bit, just slightly. Let's maybe pick um, kind of a medium light gray. Let's do maybe around 170 or so on the RGB for this one. And we'll just uh, select that glass layer there and we'll just fill it. With that color just to lighten that up a bit uh, we don't want the glass to be super light else it's going to be uh, completely reflective to the specular uh, highlights okay and for the dirt layer here let's maybe keep that on on the spec map just so we have uh, a little less highlight around the edge okay we can actually probably turn that uh, back to normal here maybe okay just to darken that up a little bit more and Let's maybe leave the opacity at 80, like we had it. Okay. And let's actually get rid of this layer too. We don't need that. That's just that blank layer. Okay, and we also want to have the text on uh, the spec map so we get a little bit more of a highlight off this white uh, lettering here. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think we'll just leave that alone. We don't really need to adjust it any further. And we'll also leave the AO on uh, on the spec map. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Let's maybe save it out here. Let's go save as and save it as spec. Okay, 
and hook A, and we'll just go into Max here and load that up and see how it looks. So let's just do another test render here. Okay, and I'm just going to clone this render here by hitting this little icon up here. Okay, we'll just put this over on the side, close the original, and let's just minimize that guy. Okay, so go back into the material editor with M, and we'll go down to the specular level slot here, open that up, and choose bitmap, and we'll just toss in that spec map, and we'll blow this up. Okay, you can already see that the highlights are a little bit more broken up here, which is what we want. Okay, and we'll just leave that at 100% for now. Uh, let's do a test. Okay, and we'll just compare that to the other one. Okay, you can already see that the uh, spec, max, uh, spec map is working pretty good here, and uh, we're getting a little bit of highlights on the uh, metal. Uh, we do need to adjust the shader a little bit more. Okay, so let's close that. We'll close that as well. And we'll just play with some settings up here. Uh, now that we have the spec map in, uh, we don't really need to worry about the specular level here. That's really not doing anything anymore. Uh, it'll be visible in the viewport if you crank this up on the model, but it's really not affecting the render. Okay, so we'll just go to right click on that and zero it out. Okay, and all the specular will be controlled by that map. Okay, I do think we need to make it a little bit more glossy here. So let's take this up a little bit more, tighten those highlights up here. Okay, you don't want to go too high else it's going to look way too shiny and it'll probably look wet. Uh, let's dial it back a bit. Let's maybe try like 45 and we'll do a test render. Okay, and that's giving us a little bit more of uh, a tight highlight there. Um, let's maybe take it down a little bit. Let's try 40. Okay, and that looks a little bit more like metal. Let's just do another angle in here. Okay, so that's working pretty good. Let's try the back. Okay. And another thing you can play with is the actual level of the specular here. Um, it's at 100% here, but we can go higher if we want. So let's try like, uh, just for example, say 200. Okay, and you can see that made that a lot more intense here. So if you run it out, it's gonna be obviously a lot more uh, reflective to the lights. Okay, and that's a little bit too much. Let's tone that back down. Let's do maybe like uh, 150. We'll give that a shot. And uh, that looks okay, but it's still a little much. Let's turn it down a little bit more. Let's do like 125. Okay, and that'll also depend on uh, what your lighting setup is in the scene. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Let's just spin around the back here. Okay, and I do think uh, we have too much spec on the glass up here. You can see we can't really see through that anymore. So let's maybe adjust that. Okay, we'll go back into our map here and let's go back to the glass layer and we're going to make that a little bit more dark like we originally had it to get rid of uh, some of the highlight. And we'll take it down to like seven or so and try that. Okay, so let's fill that and save over it. And back in Max here, we'll just do another test render and see how that looks. Okay, and you can see that's not nearly as intense as it was. Okay, so we're still seeing through there to the back, which is what we want. Okay, so uh, we're looking pretty good here. Uh, we could definitely still adjust some lighting. Uh, it doesn't look bad, but it's a little dark on the edges here. And uh, we just tossed those spotlights in there, so uh, we should really adjust that a little bit more to get a better look. Okay, let me just close that up. Let's uh, close this up for now. And uh, we're pretty much done with Photoshop here, and we'll just uh, play with everything here in Max uh, to tweak this out a little bit further before we uh, finish up the tutorial. Okay, so let's start tweaking the lights here. Uh, let's just go back into maybe our top view. We'll grab our first spotlight here. Okay, I'm just going to switch the uh, direct view here back to the front. And I'm just going to switch the right view here to the left. Okay, we'll zoom back around this so we can see everything. Okay, so we'll grab our first spotlight here in front. And let's maybe switch from area shadows to maybe ray trace shadows, uh, just so everything's a little bit more sharp. And we'll take the multiplier back down to one. Okay, and we'll leave that just maybe a white color for the front light. Okay, I'm just gonna move this slightly here. Let's move it maybe a little bit over. Okay, so I have a good angle on it. And we'll maybe bring it down just slightly here, so it's a little bit more front. Okay. Something like that should be fine. Uh, let's maybe hold down shift and we'll just clone this over to the uh, left side of the front. Okay, maybe something like that. 
Okay, we'll choose copy here. And for this one, we'll just bring it down maybe uh, a little bit lower so it's kind of facing up at it. Okay, so we have a little bit of an up angle on it. And for this one, we'll turn off shadows. We don't need it on this light. We'll just use it on our main light. And let's also make the color uh, maybe more of a bluish shade here. Uh, maybe something like that, uh, just kind of like a mid-tone blue. Okay, we also can take the intensity down maybe to maybe 0.5 on this guy. Okay, and let's grab that backlight there. We'll give this a little bit more of an angle too. Let's just push it over here. This will kind of be like our uh, rim light. Okay, so I'm going to push it over to the side there. So we're getting a casting kind of on the edge here. And let's bring it up a little bit high, uh, a little bit higher so it's kind of hitting the top as well. Okay, and for this guy, let's also turn off shadows. We don't need them. Uh, we'll take it maybe back down to say one. And we're going to make this one uh, more of an orange color. Let's do it maybe a little bit darker. All right, let's maybe do something around there. Uh, so we have uh, quite an intense orange color here. Okay, and let's just try it at one. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a test render here with F9. Okay, and you can see that orange light's hitting the side there, um, as well as some of the blue in here from that front light. Uh, it's still a little too dark, so let's maybe add some GI into the scene. Okay, and that's gonna affect uh, the look of the spec map a bit if we have GI in here, but we'll uh, adjust that a little bit later on. Okay, so let's grab maybe um, a skylight here. Okay, and I'm just going to click that into the scene. It doesn't really matter where you have it. Just drop that in. And in order to render uh, GI with the scanline renderer, we're going to need to go into the renderer here. Whoops, let's not do that. Let's just hit F10. And we'll go into the advanced lighting tab. Okay, we're going to pull this down to light tracer. Okay, and I'm going to leave this the uh, default settings here, I think these will work well. Okay, so we'll do a render with this. And that's gonna slow it down quite a bit as well. So we'll just let this render out quickly. And that's gonna brighten the model up quite a bit. And we're also gonna lose uh, some of the intensity on that spec, okay, because of the light. And that looks uh, a little too bright. So let's maybe just close that up. Let's go into the modify panel here for the skylight and we'll just dumb this down a bit. Let's do maybe like, uh, 0.6. Okay, and we'll do another test render here with F9. Okay, so you see this a little bit more uh, or less intense here, and we're getting a little more of the spec map uh, through. Okay, and let's maybe open up Material Editor with M. Okay, and like I mentioned before, you can actually adjust the intensity of the spec map here. So let's actually take this back up quite high. Let's do like 200. Okay, and I just want to intensify that so we can actually uh, see some of it in the viewport here. So we'll do another test render. Okay, so you can see we're getting our metal look back and uh, the spec map is working the way we want it to. Okay, this still might be a little bit too bright. Let's maybe take this down to 0.5 okay and I'm just gonna maybe intensify this uh, orange light a little bit more uh, let's do like maybe 1.2 okay and we'll do another test render here okay so you can see the orange is uh, hitting that side there and lighten it up pretty good for us okay so that looks pretty good Let's maybe just uh, blow this window up. Just gonna click on the shield there and hit Z so we can zoom around it. And we'll just see what it looks like from another angle here. It's gonna look a little bit different because of the angle of our lights, but we'll just uh, check it out. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, if we were to rotate around the back here, uh, we're pretty much going to end up with just an orange uh, render here because of that orange light in the back. Um, let's just try it. Okay, you can see that's going to be pretty much uh, just orange light on the back as well as uh, some white highlights from that uh, left side light there in the front. Okay, so uh, you obviously probably wouldn't want to render it out uh, like this. So. If you're do, using a setup like this uh, for the lighting, you'd probably just want to rotate the model around if you want to render the back. All right, so you'd want to get your camera kind of in the front 
and then just grab onto the uh, shield there and just give it a spin. Okay, so you can actually maintain the same lighting on uh, both sides. Okay, and that orange light there is going to pop that pretty good, uh, depending on the angle of the camera to it. Okay, and as we get a lower, uh, more of a glancing angle, you're going to get a lot more of a specular highlight as well as a lot more uh, of a highlight from that uh, orange light. Okay, so it'll definitely depend on which angle you're running from. Okay, but overall that looks uh, pretty good and I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Let's just uh, hit Control z here to spin that back around. Okay, and I don't really think there's much else we need to do here. Uh, we pretty much have the shader set up the way we want. And you could uh, still tweak out you know, the glossiness levels depending on how reflective you want it to be or how tight you want the highlights to be. And also play with that spec level here and even the bump map. Uh, that'll look a little different with the other lighting in the scene. Uh, so you might want to change that a little bit. And you can also go into the spec map here. And if you want to sharpen up, uh, the highlights a little bit more you could set this down to say like 0.65 like we did before for the bump map and i'll just make those highlights a little bit more crisp okay so let's do one final render here and see how it looks let's just close this stuff up Okay, so overall I think it uh, came out pretty good and we had a pretty good result on this. Okay, you can definitely play with that uh, those glass settings either on the transparency or even maybe completely remove that from the spec map if you want to get rid of this uh, highlight there. I'm just going to leave it like this, but you can definitely don't tone that down a little bit more uh, dark and it'll get rid of uh, that highlight for you if you don't like what that looks like. Okay, so I guess that's pretty much it. Um, hopefully you learned something from this, and uh, thanks for watching.